Bill Ford here, and I'm going to share today something a little different. Uh, this is Sunday, the uh, 30th, 2022, and I'm going to read the confessions of people who did not know the Lord. Some of them were atheists uh, that didn't believe, believe there was a God, but confessions at their time of death. Some of them were recorded, I think, by their doctors. But it's very interesting, and I think it would be good for us to take note of what it's like when people pass or getting ready to pass to the side, especially when they did not know the Lord, because there's a big difference. Because so many people think, oh, well, I don't know if there's a hereafter life or, or if there's a God. Well, let me tell you, there is a God and there is an afterlife, but you're going to spend that afterlife either with God in the presence of his angels and the other people who believe him, or you're going to spend it in hell with those who rejected Christ Jesus. The first one I want to read is Caesar Borgia. Uh, he was an Italian nobleman, a politician, and cardinal. He says, while I lived, I provided for everything but death. Now I must die and am unprepared to die. Boy, isn't that true for so many people? We make preparation for everything but the most important, and that's where we're going to spend eternity. Thomas Hobbes, a political philosopher, said, I say again, if I had the whole world to, at my disposal, I would give it uh, to live one day. I'm about to take a leap into the dark. Thomas Paine, the leading atheist writer in American colonies, Stay with me, for God's sake, I cannot bear to be left alone. O oh Lord, help me. O oh God, what have I done to suffer so much? What will become of me hereafter? I would give worlds if I had them, that the age of reason had never been published. O oh Lord, help me. No, don't leave me. Send even a child to stay with me, for I am on the edge of hell here alone. If ever the devil had an agent, I have been that one. The next is Sir Thomas Scott, Chancellor of England. Until the moment I thought there was neither a God nor hell, now I know and feel that they are both, and I am doomed to perdition by the just judgment of the Almighty. This is by uh, Voltaire, famous anti-Christian atheist. I have swallowed nothing but smoke. I have intoxicated myself with the incense that turned my head. I am abandoned by God and man. He said to his physician, Dr. Foshan, I will give you half of what I am worth if you will give me six months to, of life. And when he was told that that was not possible, he said, then I shall die and go to hell. His nurse said, for all the money in Europe, I would, would not want to see another unbeliever die. All night long, he cried for forgiveness. This is Robert Ingersoll, an American writer and orator during the golden age of free thought. O oh God, if there be a God, save my soul, if I have a soul. Some say it will be this way. O oh God, if there is a God, save my soul, if I have a soul from hell, if there be a hell. This is David Hume, atheist, philosopher, famous for his philosophy of empiricism. I don't know if I pronounced that word right or not. In skepticism of religion, he cried loud on his deathbed, I am in flames. It is said his desperation was a horrible scene. They say, you know, they say when you're getting close to death that you can, many people see glimpses over to the other side because they're moving in to that realm. And now I've known those uh, that have seen glimpses in the heaven as they were dying. They smelled the smell, sweet smells of heaven. Uh, and this is an awesome way to go because they were fixing to cross over into heaven itself. This one here, most of us have heard this person, is Napoleon Bonaparte. 
French uh, emperor who, like Adolf Hitler, brought death to millions to satisfy his greedy, power-mad, selfish ambitions for world conquest. He said, I die before my time, and he did. He was a young man, and my body will be given back to the earth. Such is the fate of him who has been called the great Napoleon. What an abyss between my deep misery and the eternal kingdom of Christ. The next is Sir Francis Newport, head of an English atheist club to those gathered around his deathbed. You need not tell me there is no God, for I know there is one, and that I am in his presence. You need not tell me there is no hell. I feel myself already slipping. Wretches cease you idle talk about there being hope for me. I know I am lost forever. Oh, that fire. Oh, the insufferable pains of hell. Oh, that I could lie for a thousand years upon the fire that is never quenched to purchase the favor of God and be united to him again. But it is fruitless, a fruitless wish. Millions and millions of years will bring me no nearer the end of my torments than one poor hour. O oh, eternity, eternity, forever and ever. O oh, the insufferable pains of hell. Wow, he saw a lot, didn't he? The next is Charles the Ninth, the French king. Urged by his mother, he gave the order for the massacre of the French Huguenots, in which 15,000 souls were slaughtered in Paris alone and 100,000 in other sections of France. For no other reason that they loved Christ. The guilty king suffered miserably for years after that event. He finally died bathed in blood bursting from his veins. To his physicians, he said in his last hours, asleep or awake, I see the mangled forms of the Huguenots passing before me. They drop with the blood. They point at their open wounds. Oh, that I had spared at least the little infants at the bosom. What blood? I know not where I am. How will all this end? What shall I do? I am forever. I am lost forever. I know it. Oh, I have done wrong. The next is David Strauss, leading representative of Germany, excuse me, German ration, rationalism, after spending a lifetime Caring um, and erasing belief in God from the minds of others. My philosophy leaves me utterly forlorn. I feel like one caught in the merciless jaws of an automatic machine, and knowing at uh, not knowing at what time one of his great hammers will crush me. This is Joseph Stalin, and most everybody's heard of him. The uh, evil dictator in the Soviet Union, killed millions of his own people. He was, uh, it says, Soviet Georgian revolutionary and politician. In a Newsweek, inter Newsweek interview with Sir, uh, Svetlana Lana Stalin, uh, the daughter of Joseph Stalin, she told of her father's death. My father died a difficult and terrible death. God grants us an easy death only to the just. At what seemed the very at the very last moment, he suddenly opened his eyes and cast a glance over everyone in the room. It was a terrible glance, insane or perhaps angry. His left hand was raised as though he were pointing to something above and bringing down a curse on us all. The gesture was full of menace. The next moment, he was dead. This next one many have heard of too. His name is Anton LaVey. He is the author of the Satanic Bible and high priest of the religion dedicated to the worship of Satan. One of his famous quotes was, There is a beast in man that needs to be exercised. Uh, in other words, cast out. <laughs> his dying words were, Oh my, oh my, what have I done? There's something very wrong. There's something very wrong. Yes, indeed, there was, Anton. 
you served a wrong master. This was from Gandhi. At his death, he said, For the first time in fifty years, I find myself in the slow of despond. All about me is darkness. I am praying for light. Now, the, these are sad testimonies of people uh, who died not knowing the Lord. It, it's a terrible thing. I, I've been with people that um, passed away, and um, I'll, I'll share just one. There was a man in my church years ago. He was an alcoholic. Well, actually, he, wasn't. he never came to my church, but his wife did. And I would go visit him in his home and talk to him about the Lord. Now, he was an alcoholic, and finally his liver began to give out on him. And um, then his kidneys began to shut down. And he, he was dying. In fact, when, when his wife called me, he was in a coma. So I came to the hospital. And as I stood looking over this man that I knew was on his way to hell, I began to pray and, and, and ask God for mercy. And because he was in a coma, I couldn't talk to him. And <clears throat> suddenly, Jesus came and stood at the end of that bed. Now you say, how do you know that? Well, let me tell you, I know the presence of Jesus, and I know what he, who he is and when he comes, because I've been in his presence many times. I'm talking about his physical presence. And I, I was so excited, I turned, I wanted to look at him, and he spoke and said, you keep praying. And at the moment, I was praying in the Holy Spirit, so I, which is tongues. And I, so I said, okay, and I kept praying in tongues. But it was like he let me in on what was going on because as I was praying in the spirit, I knew Jesus was talking and communicating to this alcoholic in the bed. There was a communication going back and forth. And then after a few moments, it wasn't long, I heard the Lord say to me, he said, it's okay now, I'm taking him with me. And I, boy, I just went, Wow. And so I turned around and I told his, his wife, I said, listen, let's, why don't we go get a cup of coffee or something? Because I knew he, he would be gone. And I, and I guess I was thinking maybe I should take her out of the room. I don't know. So as we left the room, her uh, son was coming in to see his dad. <clears throat> and uh, he, came, he came on in the room as we exited. And we didn't get uh, maybe to the next uh, door in the hall of the hospital when her son come running back out saying, mom, mom, did you know dad is gone? And, and I looked at her and I said, it's okay. I'll tell you what happened in a moment. And that was in a, a, a wonderful experience because that was somebody that Jesus saved right on the deathbed. Now you say, well, how come some of these others didn't get saved on the deathbed? One reason why is because many people reject God all through their life. And their heart becomes hard. And an example of that is Pharaoh of Egypt. You remember the Bible says God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Well, how did he do that? By speaking the truth to him. And see, Pharaoh was very arrogant. He, he was uh, uh, the ruler of all Egypt. And, uh, and back then they thought the rulers were gods. But they all died like men. And Pharaoh uh, pursued the children of Israel in the Red Sea. Now you, either you've got to be really dumb are really arrogant and full of pride to do that, thinking uh, here God is opening a way, a supernatural way for the children of Israel to escape. And Pharaoh hardened, heart was hardened so much that he pursued them. And then, of course, they all drowned in, when the sea closed in on them. Well, you, you can reject God so much that your heart becomes really hard. And then when the time comes, uh, say at death, and you have a change of mind, not so much a change of heart necessarily. And, and it, it's too late. You, you, you've gone past the time of your ability to repent anymore because you become so hard. And that's what happens to many people. And I want to, I want to say something to those of you listening right now and watching this video. Listen, repentance is the currency of the courts of heaven. If you want to find favor with the judge of all the earth, which is God, You've got to come through the shed blood of Jesus and you've got to be willing to repent of your sins. If you're not willing to repent of your sins, there is no salvation, not for anybody. 
because Jesus came to save us from our sins. He doesn't save us and allow us to continue in our sin. He delivers us from it. And I want to encourage you. You need to be a person who is willing to repent any time you sin and transgress the things of God. I want to close here uh, with one more thing. And uh, these several prophets have been warning about this. And uh, <clears throat> I'm going to read this. Uh, there have been several prophets within the last month or so that God has revealed to them that we are to brace ourselves for a great shaking to purge out the evil that has ruled us from behind the scenes. I think they're speaking about um, our, our nation. He said the purpose for the shaking is to bring about true repentance, and that's what we need so desperately. For repentance is the only hope that we have against God's judgment that are that judgments that are now in the earth. This is to save America and not destroy it. We all sense that something is about to break loose very soon. And one prophet I heard, um, his name is Barry Wunsch from Canada, and the Lord showed him, he said, that Satan is about to release everything he's got because he's trying to stop what God is doing in the earth in dealing with the wickedness and evil and at the same time sending one of the greatest moves of the Holy Spirit ever. Praise God. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. I look forward each week to sharing with you. Uh, I look forward to seeing you next week. God bless you and keep your eyes on Jesus and trust in him because he is the only refuge we have in this time. Amen. Bye-bye for now.